I just thought I'd do a little trigger warning for this podcast because our themes are around coercive control and controlling relationships and broken hearts. So if you're feeling particularly vulnerable at the moment, maybe maybe don't listen to this. And we're also going to put just under here some organisations that you can contact if you're struggling. Hello, it's a how to stay married dot 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 so far. Talking all things relationships, really. Yeah. And, and, what, and the subject that came to us today was a bit of a surprise how it came well, to yeah, us. Well, it came to us in one of the coffee moanings where we talked about the first ever judgment within uh, an abusive relationship. They weren't prosecuted no. for gaslighting, but gaslighting the term was part of the verdict, if yeah. you like, in terms of what the person yeah. had done wrong. So it's the first time it's been used in a legal setting. Uh, and many sort of, you know, domestic violence charities and mm. lawyers and legal uh, bods said that this is a really progressive Heralded move. Heralded it as yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. Good, it's it's a, big a good deal. move. And so when we discussed it on Coffee Moaning, you and I were quite shocked at the response, weren't we? Yeah, I mean, you guys, I know a lot of you listened, watch this or listen to this podcast as well. It was just, it, there was a wave mm. of everything. And in fact, yesterday we were driving back from somewhere and I was just, I said to Mark, because isn't it weird how coercive control, which is what gaslighting is, has become now something that we all know? Like yeah. even our children would say coercive control. And when you think about through the through the centuries, how mm. it wasn't even def- an even a definable thing. No. So the fact that it can now be used in a court of law, something that is so successful mm. because it can be so indefinable. Mm. So gaslighting is a term come from actually a play written in the 1930s where a husband drives his wife mad mm. by continually dimming the lights of the gas. That's the gas lit. And then, but telling her that the house is perfectly lit and what was yeah. wrong with her. Um, and very subtle. Mm. How can it be proven? Mm. And actually, the case that you were talking about, Mark, was a pretty horrific, mm. um, where this was the first time that gaslighting was used as a terminology, because th- this woman's husband was a mental health worker mm. and managed to convince not only her doctors, but everyone around her, mm. that she had bipolar. She did not. He even managed to convince her at one point that she had bipolar. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, the most awful. I mean, it's almost like... It's almost like, I know this sounds extreme, it's almost like murder. It's like trying to kill the person that they are while still being alive. Well, I, it's that serious to me. You know what? Trying to make somebody feel they've lost their mind. Oh. Well, you know what I'm awful. like with any of these subjects? I like to go right, gran- I like to go into the granular origin of it. And I wonder whether when you get into what gaslighting is, which is making people feel that there's, you know, convincing them of an alternate reality hmm. uh, and slowly making them question their own sense of what reality is but making it gaslighting isn't making them wonder gas successful gaslighting is making yeah. them believe mm. that reality is different to what it mm. is i.e i said this no you didn't you said this mm. and well and you accept yeah. that correction yeah the spectrum is very broad mm. isn't it you it can be as something as terrible as this case that we were talking mm. about we convinced she was bipolar he used rape and all sorts of terrible things to control her to the other end of the scale, where somebody has just managed to make you question everything about mm. what you're doing. And a lot of the comments that we had were around that. Mm. You know, I got to the point that my partner, that anything I did, I questioned whether it was actually right, yeah. what I was doing. Yeah. Um, and this has got nothing to do with being a weak person. This can be done to any kind of person. I don't believe in the phrase weak person anyway, Mm. but I think that's often why people can be very successful because there's almost some shame to it. If you, if you come to the realization at any point that maybe you are being controlled and maybe you've been, Mm. you know, sold a pup really in your relationship, it's very difficult to admit that. Yeah. And I can think of situations in my own life where I would now, things I accept now, there's no way I would accept certain behaviors that i accepted when I was younger. Right, right. And I'm sure like you, I have friends, oh, 
it's the most difficult thing when you're watching a mm. friend in a coercive controlled just, relationship. But again, just going back to the origin of the mm. term and the origin of where it comes from. I mean, I wonder whether gaslighting is something that we can obviously identify now in this more sort of, you know, you know, Awake, sexually aware. equivalent, you know, equality is key, feminism is still yielding the results that it needs to. And, and you know, we've come a long way, basically. We've come a long way since, say, the days of a story. Check out the yellow wallpaper, where, once again, you have gaslighting writ large, as someone pointed out. Um, yellow paper is a, is a, is a uh, sort of a short story, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a novella about a yeah. woman who's sort of made to believe a certain reality and are locked in her room. And that's by, isn't <laughs> that, I think that's, that is by her husband. I thought it was by her brother. Um, anyway, so I wonder whether gaslighting in essence was just the normal behavior of men yeah. towards women to convince them to accept second best or the limits of their experience so in a sense the very act of marriage way back when was the beginning of the gaslighting process of misogyny telling them, yeah exactly the absolute belief that men are better than women or yeah. that women are but, but uh, of course, and as times have changed, so has that, that mm. power bounce shifted. Because we got a number of messages in from people, actually, either from I mean, one of them, I don't know if we managed to, to put that in what we collated, but from a grandmother that said her son, you know, she was beside herself, the grandson, mm. that she believed her grandson was under complete co coercive control mm. by his wife. It is no longer just a male against women, though, of course, it is... Yeah. It's much, It's a far bigger problem that yeah. way around. Um, I mean, it's it's very different to say. I mean, what's the difference between gaslighting and lying? I mean, it's very different to lying. You sort of, if if someone asks you something and you sort of give an alternate sort of set of events, or uh, certainly you did this. No, I didn't. I didn't do that. You know. Well, I suppose again, that spectrum is quite broad. So you'll have the person who may be a very sexist bullying sort mm. of person who's mm. used to just controlling, controlling people yeah. by then you could have a narcissist you could go to the other end of this is mm. somebody who's a narcissistic psychopath mm. who decides on a pattern of behavior to get from another person completely what they want with absolutely no conscience because mm. i think some people that might be in a coercive relationship or or manipulating somebody if you actually show them themselves they might be quite horrified and shocked. You know how often when bullies well, are told uh, they're bullies and they're yeah. like, I was going to say, is, oh, that, <laughs> is there always knowledge? Because I can think of examples in relationships I've been in where the other person or I, if you were to put it under the microscope of is that gaslighting, you could possibly come out with a positive result. But in fact, you were unaware that you were perhaps being selfish. You were unaware that you were being fearful. Um, you know, I know for a fact that given my drinking past, it's the irony is that people think the alcoholics are the ones that are doing all the manipulating, but an alcoholic offers Very the gaslighter a brilliant opportunity to constantly alter the reality that they were in because they've got no way of cross cross referencing it or checking it because they can't remember. And so, well, we're in, not, and we know it for certain relationship yeah. that we. Well, watched, I, I'm saying that that we happened to me. For years. I think that happened to me. Yeah, I can I can remember certain circumstances where I know for a fact, even through the misty eyes of of alcohol. That didn't happen, but they were trying to convince me this had happened, mm. and it just mm. hadn't. And that is gaslighting. Well, that's when you leave yourself really vulnerable, isn't mm. it? If you're in, and but also you can imagine if you are in a really controlling, manipulative, unhappy relationship, alcohol can often be a way to escape that. And we know of a relationship where we watched that for years, mm. Mm. when this one person who was a heavy drinker, uh, some might say an alcoholic and was in an unhappy relationship, and their partner looks like the sweetest, loveliest person, mm. very mild-mannered, very mild-voiced, always sober, always picking the other person up and taking them home, dealing with the kids. And yet, we couldn't help notice how often the other person was pouring those drinks, yeah. and pouring those drinks, and pouring those drinks. And then there would be days afterwards where they were actually very cross with them and that person was having to do everything that other person wanted because they got drunk. So, so let's just examine what was going on there. So in a sense, the gaslighting was making, was they were using the alcohol mm. to make the person more pliable. And, and to, ashamed. And ashamed so that they looked better. And insecure. So that the person who'd been pouring the wine and gaslighting seemed better, seemed the reasonable one. It made the other person seem, seem unreasonable and unreliable mm. and, and sort of unpredictable. 
and they yeah. could leverage some control mm. in other areas of their relationship. Because I think that's the point of gaslighting, isn't it? The point of gaslighting is to have full control. Is to have full control, mm. not just of what you're gaslighting about, but in the, in the whole relationship. Mm. So, for example, you know. So you can see how it's open to all kinds of people. Yeah. People that don't even realise they're doing it. They've always been controlled themselves. Say, mm. if you had a very controlling upbringing, uh, somebody that has. I mean, people with very high anxiety can be very mm. controlling. And it's actually from a place of fear in themselves. So mm. not everybody that controls and manipulates another person is the gas, you know. The gaslighter. The dastardly gaslighter. Mm. Well, I think there's something on the sort of narcissistic psychopathic scale. Yeah. I love doing psycho bubble. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah, I think I that cold hearted, that example that we gave earlier of the man that convinced the family, convinced the woman, mm. or somebody pouring drinks down the throat of somebody so that they can feel ashamed and broken and a bit mm. confused the next day and spend the whole of the rest of the day apologising. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Horrible. Yeah, no, really, ex and it is exploitative, and it can happen at the low level of just what you've said and how you say it. You know. I, I, I mean, I'm going to be honest here. I remember when you used to have really bad hangovers... I would always, if I was annoyed with you the night before for you being drunk, I would always think, I'm going to make his fucking life hell tomorrow because he's hungover. And then I never could mm. because I felt so sorry for you. Right. Because you did, you were broken and I would see you trying to pretend that you were okay. And actually I would just end up feeling sorry for you. But you could see how that could be a really, mm. a tool to manipulate somebody. Well, again, I, I, mean, I mean, it's like broken people hurt broken people, don't they? And, yeah. I, and I think it's that thing of, you know, whatever the cause, cause of, you know, them controlling or gaslighting is, uh, you know, it's malicious. You, you can, you know, no amount of understanding why they're doing it, 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 you know, justifies or explains away the fact that they're doing it. That's my point. And I think we have to be mindful that this just isn't just like relationships. Yeah. This is any kind of relationship. Oh, yeah. A mother, a father, a Children. sister, a brother, uh, siblings between each other. Mm. This isn't this isn't exclusive to sexual relationships. Well, bosses as well. Quite a few comments have come through from yeah, you know, that management was teams and bosses who gaslit their staff into thinking certain teachers things. we can think of a certain teacher absolutely yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And, it, um, and it isn't just about getting the result around a specific thing because i think that's the mistake we make it's about creating a climate of self-doubt in a person so that they then become more even more controllable yeah more reliant and, and even you. more yeah you're, pliable. you're an idiot oh you can't ever make a job oh my god what have yeah. you broken that again what is wrong with you yeah. it can just start just in a very low level way until down. somebody's a complete wreck yeah absolutely well, i always say it's what like when you're talking about domestic violence because a lot of people have said this to me have been in domestic violence relationships don't focus on the violence mm. Focus on what they did to me to allow the other person to be violent. Mm. The breaking down of a, of a person. Well, I mean, I, 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 I feel joyful that this is now able to be used in a Yeah, 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 all. absolutely. Do you remember yeah. that case a couple of years ago and that woman was that... They were a very wealthy couple. I think he was a bit of a lord and they, had, they lived in a big mansion somewhere. Do you remember? And she'd been married to him for years. No. And she tried to divorce him on coercive control. And they wouldn't allow it. And he oh, contested right. the divorce. And it was all this sort of thing where he wouldn't talk to her for days or he mm. would humiliate her at the dinner table. It was such a long catalogue of things. And I think she went back to appeal and she eventually mm. got it. But you just think, God, it's so difficult to prove because it's the thin layers mm. of the breakdown also, of a person. But also what you just said then is really interesting because I think gaslighting doesn't have to be a proactive uh, or, or a step forward or an action, withdrawing your attention and remaining silent. Right I mean, time. I'm pretty sure when I look back and I think about my grandfather and my nan, he would, in a sense, gaslight by omission. Mm. You know, he would leave oh, her I've vulnerable. He wouldn't tell her what he was doing. He would kind of make out that she was being over the top. And, and that makes you irrational. feel worthless, right? If yeah. somebody ignores you, if somebody yeah. doesn't doesn't deem you important enough, yeah. To discuss but also, finances or work or your yeah. day. That's going to demean that person. Yeah, and it dismisses it's very powerful. And, and it totally disqualifies the person's emotions if they're feeling ignored or, mm. you know, maligned, as my nan did. Certain summers, my grandfather would just go away for weeks on end. And he would sort of feign bemusement that she would have been sort of upset about that or that he wouldn't have called in or phoned or, or you know. 
And, and again, that makes you think you're going mad. And I think that's the thing. It's when you feel you're going mad, that's when it becomes really frustrating. And yet I can think of many occasions when I feel like I've been going mad with you. And I'm sure you can feel, think of many occasions when you felt like you were going mad with me. I mean, there is a difference between gaslighting and falling out or having mm. different opinions. And I think that's the problem. I think problematic. it's a long and sustained chipping away at a person's character, at mm. a person's self-esteem. All relationships will have moments, days, maybe even sometimes months where yeah. there's the where's the where there's something like that going on. But this is this is something different. It's a yes, drip, I drip. Should we should we hear some? It's of a the drip, comments? drip of consistent erosion. Mm. That's what it is, erosion. I'm um, going to start with Emma Carter. My boy's dad gaslit me all through our relationship, isolated me from friends, told me I was fat, ugly. No one would ever fancy me. He used to beat me and convince me it was normal. Oh my God. And that all men did it. When I finally ended the relationship, he stalked me and even tried to run me over with my boys oh in my the car. Oh my God. I managed to jump over a hedge as he was driving on the pavement. I ended up moving to Birmingham to get away from him. Unfortunately, he wasn't the only one to gaslight me. My mum did all my life too. Oh, sweet. That's terrible, isn't it? That's just terrible. But look at that pattern you see. Yeah. That's interesting, isn't it? It's like... On some cellular level, this is what they taught me at the Priory, actually, when you, were, when you were there. It was that we, on a cellular level, we choose things, we choose people that we want to fix in a way. Mm. That we do, or fix something in ourselves that wasn't right. And we'll mm. often choose someone. So she might just have, on a subconscious level, this is what they say in therapy, have chosen it. There will have been, there will have been little... There's little markers, isn't there, that well, tells us on an instinctive level yeah. what a person is. I mean, it's weird. You hear about it with the, you know, stories of, of, you know, child abuse, that there's a sort of familiarity. There's a bond that struck, curiously twisted bond that mm. struck between the victim and the abuser. Just trying to work it out. Trying to work it out. And because there's a close proximity of sorts, it's really hard to disentangle how you're mm. feeling. Mm. I mean, this is not... Obviously not everyone. No, 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 of course, of course. Set. And I mean, a small example of this is I had a really horrible teenage life living with a woman that I didn't want to live with, my mum's partner and all that, and I hated it. And this was in the middle of suburbia. And I hated it. I hated every minute of it. You know, I never had friends around. I'd, it was just horrible. There was no sort of fun to it. But, and this is a small example, whenever I go to suburban areas like it, I feel com I feel safe. I feel comfortable. God, I wonder what that is. And, it, 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 and I think it's part of that thing of, and I'm just trying to think, why would you, you know, if, you, if you've had it in one relationship, you're drawn to it again in another. I do think it's about some strange I think it's trying to fix it, the belief comfort. also yeah. that you can fix it. Like yeah. when we went to marriage guidance counselling, you said, you know, if, if you, the person you're with is good enough, and you like each other enough, mm. stick with them because yeah. you will come in here down the line with somebody fairly similar because yeah. we choose people that we can hopefully work out our relationships Absolutely. with our parents where they went wrong. And I think that's so funny. So true. There's a lot of you, there's a lot that's like you. My dad and you are liking a lot of things. I wondered what you were going to say there. <laughs> you sort of like, there's a lot no, of no, you. No, no, you are. There's some real similarities yeah. in your character. Yeah, well, there's none between you and my mum. Yes, um, there is. Are, are you there? joking? Like what? Oh, my God. Well, an inability to stay focused on something. We're both very ditzy in the same way. We're both very, like, happy in the morning, and you hate both of us for that. Yeah, yeah. We're quite jolly. Yeah. We both um, sing like canaries. <sighs> Yes, quite. On crack. <laughs> there's, there's another one here from uh, Anonymous. I was teaching and it was the management team who were gaslighting. I no mm. longer teach. Oh, no. Again, and that's about institutions trying to leverage people out by, yeah. making, by oh. making them question their Seen work reality. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, someone else, Anonymous, turning around what I've said, stonewalling. That's in a relationship, you know, you say one thing and someone says you've said something else. Mm. Um, again, you know, putting words in your mouth, drawing different conclusions from what you say. Um, this person here says, my ex-husband used to say he told me things when he clearly hadn't, all to use as a tool for blame and to get angry. Mm. That's, a, that's a really bad one. You know, you say you've said something and because the person isn't, focused on every detail i do think that at that point you're, the person who's gaslighting is actively exploiting blindness a blindness in that person mm. or, an, a, or a lack of focus it's evil. it is evil it's kind of you know it's finding little gaps in people's personalities sort of sidling in 
and then trying to sort of loosen up That's the tiles. That's manipulation, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Sarah says, so brilliant that you are talking about this. I work for Women's Aid. Please sign them, signpost them there. Oh, yeah. Please go to Women's Aid. Mm. Um, if, you, if, if anything that we're saying resonates for you, investigate it, you know? Mm. Investigate it. Mm. Think about it a bit more. So maybe even start to write things down. If you're starting to think, somewhere safe, obviously, so that the person doesn't see it. But, you know, if you're, if, you, if you're not sure whether you're actually imagining the sorts of things that your person is doing or saying to you, mm. start, start writing them down. I had to say this recently to somebody that I know. Start writing it down because this person that you're with seems to be under the illusion mm. that there is a whole separate world for him. Mm. So when he says... Oh, I, I don't accept that. I don't want that. It's like, well, that actually doesn't matter because yeah. there's a wider world than your little world. Yeah. And and I said to this friend of mine, start writing these things down because you'll be able to look back at them. Mm. And you'll be able to go, well, actually, yeah, fucking hell. Mm. It's hard because your own thoughts can become your reality, can't, can't they? And, and twist, yeah. you can actually aid the own twisting, your, your twisting of your mind. Absolutely. You turn in on yourself. Leo says, I've been gaslit by my own nan. She never says sorry and is always changing her story to reflect herself in a good light or as the victim. It's everyone's fault but hers. I suppose that oh is a form of gaslighting, God. always wanting to be the victim. Re re -con reconstructing reality so that you look like... You're, I mean, I can think of a few people I know like that. Nans can be terrible. Oh, like God, yeah. I, I know. Setting people against each other. I've seen that happen with a nan. Person. Really nasty and she had... A grandson and a granddaughter. She so favoured the grandson. Mm. And the constant knocking of the granddaughter. Honestly, it was uncomfortable. I don't know if you can remember who I'm talking about. Mm. It was uncomfortable to be around them. I had to bite my tongue quite a few times. But, oh, I've since heard she's moved in. Oh, God. Poor child. Um, someone else says he would call me names. And when I said I didn't like it, he said, but that's what I called him. Uh, would be adamant he told me things I knew he hadn't. I thought I was getting forgetful. Uh, someone else here says, I was, I was lied to, manipulated, my words twisted, made to believe I couldn't judge anything right. So, why? So that you keep going back to them to ask them for, every, for yeah. everything. So, yeah, making you dependent on them. Is that, that's another byproduct. Oh, isn't well, it? We, we've, uh, there's a group of us that have a friend, and um, oh my God, there's so many red, red flags with this guy. Um, but and there were lots of little red flags and then we got the biggest red flag when she said to us I mean you know the thing is he, he is right he's the only one that really understands me when I'm upset and knows how to handle me mm. and we were like oh my god red flag and boy did we turn out to be right on that we didn't want to be right but we turned out to be right on that uh, anonymous, my ex took cocaine and cheated and said I was controlling when I was anxious when he went out. I think that's like, that's an interesting, oh my God. but that's an interesting one because I often think about that. When people are having affairs, it's quite a common example of gaslighting. So someone has strong suspicions and then there's that sort of double bluff that kicks in and says, why, how could you think that of me? You know, questioning everything that that person has perhaps seen or knows or senses on a purely instinctive level, but knows their partner just as well as that partner knows them. And they just lie and they make you think that you're going mad. I know that exact story. Um, this exact story happened to somebody that I know. She, she was convinced that he was having an affair. Mm. This is a famous person. She convinced that he was having an affair. Found all kind of notes. She'd even got to the point where she'd picked up the phone and could hear a phone conversation and the phone was put down. It was totally clear. Mm. And her partner kept on saying, no, you're imagining it, you're imagining it. Till one day it reached fever pitch because she'd, I don't know, there was some new bit of evidence. And he actually took her out in the garden, sat her down, held her hand, looked into her eyes and said, we now really need to get you help. You're not well. You are not well. At oh my all. God. We're also sad, eyes filled with tears. Oh my God. Anyway, long story short, absolutely was doing it. Absolutely then ended up getting married to the person who was having an affair and had a child. Oh my God. I know. Totally shocking. Shamefacedly. Shocking. 
Oh. I think that happens a lot with affairs. It's a good... Oh, no, no, no. I think it's a category... Because they may not be a coercive control... control in any other department. Life, but you can use it in pockets to get what you want, Oh, absolutely. You? absolutely. But to try and make somebody feel they've lost their mind is so brutal. It's almost worse than the original act because, you know... Oh, I mean, I don't I know. Mean, we I do it a lot just in, in chat, don't we? People go, are you mad? Yeah, yeah. Are you all right in the head? You know, so. all of that stuff. Yeah. I mean, even that we shouldn't really do. It's no. like, no. if you're not agreeing with me, are you are you mad? Yes. And I suppose also it happens on a low level when people don't want to mm. be caught out having done something stupid or no, silly. No, I wasn't. I wasn't there. No, no, you, you might you've got it wrong. somebody that looked like Yeah, me. yeah, no, yeah. I didn't say that. Or when you've said something in a round, you go, what did you say? And you go, you say something that rhymed with it. <laughs> yeah. Not You know, you sort of say something you stupid bitch under your voice and you say what was that and you say oh i've, I've got, got an I've, itch. I've got stitch yeah exactly and do you you know i mean that's... i think that's more like being a four-year-old <laughs> mark, being a coercive controller. okay um this is interesting this one i'm going to keep you anonymous when he blamed me for his actions instead of taking accountability for his wrongs this is the bit that interests me i'm not sure exactly how to identify it if i'm honest mm. but i'm questioning my reality and i think that's questioning the thing. my reality that is gaslighting it's the slippery lack of detail it's like a ball covered in oil and you just can't hold it and it just moves around because sometimes even as we've sat here talking about what gaslighting is it's it's a slippery customer it's an incredible because mm, we're going off into is it this yeah, is, is it, it that, this is, is it, it that exactly what is the purpose of it who is it serving who is it who is i think it it's a sustained a sustained campaign mm. to break down a person's self-belief mm. and mental stability yeah that's what I, that's how i would yeah characterize it characterize it so that if you're if you've got a person in a position where they're questioning everything that they do yeah they're going to be completely malleable to you aren't they yeah absolutely um i'm a bit annoyed because we never edit this program but you need a wee no but there's a message that I wanted to read out, and it's in my phone. Oh, shit. So we might have to stop now so I can send it to your computer. Uh, oh, okay, let's do that. We're back, and this is um, from Zoe Agnew, who's one of our um, followers on Instagram and YouTube, and she says, I think for me, I was so unaware at the time that gaslighting was even a thing. All I remember is knowing that something wasn't right. Those feelings in your gut as women tend to have us are so important, we need to trust them. The control I felt was done in a way where it made me question myself and wonder whether if I was uh, wonder whether I was overreacting. I was made to feel if it, as if it was all in my head and it was very hard to prove it. I think when I realised it was bad was when one of my friends messaged me to say she hadn't seen me in three months. My heart really sunk because I honestly didn't even realise. Mm. I never went out and I was always with him. He would always encourage me not to go out and tell me that all I needed was him. He would even tell me women aren't allowed to tell jokes and I had to dumb down my personality when I was with him. I was so fixated on his every word. I'm just so thankful I got out of the relationship when I did because so many don't. I blame myself for so long thinking I was so weak and stupid because when I look back, it looks so clear to me now. This is the thing. I guess life is all about learning from our mistakes and knowing the signs mm. for it for it, so it will never happen again. There is definitely a huge strength in surviving that sort of thing, that's for sure. And that is, that's, that's so important, that message, because I think shame can keep you locked in to the most terrible of situations. Mm. And it's like I always say to people, you think you haven't got the strength to leave because you're using all your strength to stay. And actually, when you leave, and of course, if you're in a dangerous situation, it is never advised to just leave. You have to plan, you have to... Mm. That's where it's really good to um, make contact with people like Women's Aid and uh, organisations like that who can advise you on that. But when you've left you will realise how much of a burden it was on your shoulders, how mm. much of yourself you were using just to stay, just to bear it. But also, I guess, tied into that as well is a fear of failure because to yeah, acknowledge it and to embrace yeah. it is to is also to, to, I mean, interestingly, she said there about three months, is to hurl, in a sense, in the bin all that time 
and all that. Well, no, she energy. hadn't been out for three no, months. No, no, no. But what I'm saying, is, what I'm saying is, is that yeah, you've mm. wasted time. Yeah. You've spent an enormous amount of time doing something, being manipulated. And in a sense, I think that's probably exactly why people stay with it, because they feel, well, if I've invested this amount of time, mm, there's still definitely. some way yeah. to shift this, to move this, to not believe this or, you know, or not to get out of it, because well, also, I think they're telling the truth. That there is always hope. Yeah. You yeah. know, as soon as you're in a relationship and invariably when you're in a relationship with somebody that is a manipulator and is a coercive, coercive controller, they can be incredibly charming. Mm. Very good book to read, The Charm Syndrome. Um, they can be incredibly charming. So there can be a sense of really loving or really fancying or really lusting mm. after this person. Mm. Because don't forget the anxiety can sometimes, rather like how excitement can feel like nerves, anxiety can mm. feel like passion. Mm. That's where the whole bad boy thing comes in. And actually, it's not really. It's is not that really. What the like, bad boy thing is actually well, about. I, I, I don't know. This is just only ever no, my no, no, opinion. No, 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 but, but, just... but I think that's what it is. So the anxiety is quelled and it feels like love, but mm. actually, it's the anxiety that was induced by the erratic behaviour and but that might and again... I think I think people don't want to give up on the hope. As soon as you're with somebody and it feels good, it's like I always say it that when you when you're pregnant and if you have a miscarriage and people say, Oh well how long were you pregnant? It's like why is that gonna make a difference? Because mm. from the second I was pregnant, I was seeing the future. Mm. And I think you do tend to do that. If you're a serious person about relationships, every person you're with is potentially the person you're going to stay with. Otherwise, mm. why would you be with them? Yeah. So to give up that hope and the romance of that yeah. is difficult and can feel shameful and all those things. But it goes back again to having the familiarity of the hit, the familiarity mm. of feeling shit about yourself. If you, if you feel oh, worthless and you've got low self-esteem, yeah. all of this is going to confirm your worst yeah. fears. And as I say, it's a weird word to use, but there's strangely a comfort in that, which is why we're drawn back to it. I often talk about the fact that, you know, my, you know, anxiety as an emotion is a drug hit. And so one finds oneself repeatedly entering it, though you could argue, you know, you're not in control of it, but actually sometimes there's a rhythm to it. I'll find something else to get anxious about. I want the familiarity yeah. and comfort of yeah. that feeling of stress. It's like when people, smoke a cigarette and say well I'm not stressed anymore no mm. what you did was just relieve the stress of the addiction mm. it didn't actually relieve your stress it relieved this and 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 we've all been in those addictive cycles in certain relationships yeah. and well there you go guys why don't you please share beneath your own stories mm. or thoughts or experiences even um sharing experiences helps others to perhaps realize what kind of a you know set of circumstances they're in as well, doesn't it? I mean, just hearing some of those comments from you guys just reminds you the various different ways it can happen, how it can happen from different mm -hmm. people, not mm -hmm. just men no. and not just partners, but all sorts of, you know, from children up to parents, yeah. parents down to children, grandparents. It's an interesting one, grandparents, mm -hmm. yeah.